All right, this morning we're going to debug the error string or binary data would be truncated and the quick solution. So if you're looking really fast for the quick solution, the quick solution would be to just loop through all of the columns and get the maximum length of each column and then determine with your table that's truncating the data which column is too short. Now, I'm going to go through, because this one's kind of hard to demonstrate without going through uh, the error. There's the error. So this table we're trying to insert into, and this is the table we're inserting from. So we can loop through this table right here. I'm sorry, this table right here. That's our source table, right? And we can figure out the max length. And that's great. And in this case, it's just two columns. But uh, I've dealt with situations in which there were 700 to 1,000 columns in which you're talking about a billion rows of data. Uh, you know, and, and some of you know what I'm talking about when I say that, and we were only keeping 50 of those columns. Well, it's not a really good idea to loop through 700 columns when you only need 50. So this is what I would suggest. Chances are you're going to have an insert statement, and you're going to be selecting from a portion of that table. So the way that I would solve this problem is I would say with CTE as, and I would say, in this case, I'm going to select star from that table. But what you would do is you would put your select statement that you're selecting the 50 columns right here. And then I would say select star into other table from CTE. And so you see I've inserted the data. If it was 50 columns, it would insert all 50 columns. Now what I would do is I would then do the loop on this table. I would loop and I would take the maximum length, okay? You will find there are a lot of people, in fact, when I first began in SQL Server, several, a long time ago, it seems like, uh, let's see here, select star from, I saw people that would recommend doing this, where you get the column information from information schema, and it says where table name equals other table. And I want to show why this is not an effective method in my opinion. So I happen to know that this table, both columns, are 100 varcar. I just happen to know that. Uh, and a couple of days ago, I was solving a problem that was similar to this, and it was coming from varcar max. So let's suppose you try this technique with 50 columns, and you're like, hey, all right, let's see what this is. Okay, we're going to select the data. Okay, uh, varcar 100. Hmm. And in my case, of course, what came back was varcar, well, it, I believe it's like negative 1 but it, it basically is what the max is, right? So um, that actually doesn't help you out. You can compare these tables. We could compare this table to the main table, but you know, I wasn't going to build varcar max fields in the main table, and it's only with varcar. By the way, you could also add the filter here and data type equal var varcar, okay? Whereas what we could do, again, with the loop technique, and this is just going to be, I'm going to do it just straight out, we could say the maximum length date, and we could say the maximum length, and I believe the other column is rate. And then we would say from savings rate. And we would see 10 and we would see 6. And again, if there were 50 columns, this is where building a loop. And what you would do is you would go through the information schema and you would loop through each column name. So you would pass on the column name, get the maximum length, and so on and so forth. And so once you got that maximum length, of course, then you would know, you would see exactly where your column is. And by the way, on the information schema, keep in mind you can filter on VARCAR. More than likely, though there are exceptions, it's VARCAR that's going to cause the issue. Um, Every now and then it is a bit, but it's more than likely going to be a varcar, so you can you can definitely uh, save. The reason why this is kind of an annoying error, and I, I totally agree with developers on this, is because it doesn't tell you anything about the error. As you can go back to the video when you saw the error, it doesn't really give you specifics. It doesn't tell you, like, it broke on the column name rate, right? It doesn't tell us that. And so I understand why developers get very frustrated when they see this error, because to their thought is, why isn't it telling me where it's breaking at? And that's why it's very handy to have a loop that can loop through each column. You will find that you use that from time to time. That will come in handy many, many, many times.